is the disappearance day of uh, Gaur Kishore Das Babi, Babaji Maharaj. Amrendra Prabhu will talk about uh, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj uh, past time. Uh, we all know Amrendra Prabhu well known. Amrendra Prabhu is well known everywhere in the preaching for on Zoom and YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we are all welcome to Amrendra Prabhu uh, to the ISKCON Baltimore. And yes, Prabhuji, uh, everything is yours. Go ahead, Prabhuji. Give that. Hare Krishna, dear Pratyamana Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you for uh, kindly having me. Uh, before we begin, just a few housekeeping announcements. If we can all be on mute, um, because if we are not on mute, sometimes uh, some echo and some reverberation can be a cause of concern for uh, the participants. So uh, respecting everybody's time and presence, we can kindly mute ourselves. And of course, later as the Q&A or the questions and answers discussion is there, so depending on what the, the format of the scholars, we can do accordingly. Uh, but I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, Pradyumna Prabhu, for uh, kindly having me on this call. Um, this is um, certainly a very auspicious occasion. Today is um, the Tiro Bhavtithi, the Disappearance Festival, uh, the Viraha Mahotsav of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. The, spiritual master of uh, Thakur Bhakti Vinod Mahashay. So that will be the topic of today's uh, discussion. We will be hearing about uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and uh, some very beautiful insights into his, into his life, into the, his pastimes, uh, into his teachings and mood and mission. So this is one. Another thing is my, my request would be, um, so this is being streamed live uh, on, on, on YouTube or Facebook. It's, it's being broadcast. Yeah, so then my request would be if maybe the speaker could be put on spotlight. The reason is sometimes um, some of the participants, they keep their video on. And if this is being broadcast on a, on a public forum, then um, for privacy setting, it's always better that just the speaker is on spotlight. So that if let's say someone is having their video on or it gets on in the middle, um, that privacy is um, still maintained. Because sometimes in some classes we have seen that uh, some sit at home, it's a, it's a family setting. Uh, so the child is coming or the, the mother is sitting, the father is sitting with the video on. And let's say if the speaker is not on spotlight, then that video, if it's on social platform like Facebook or YouTube, then others also see later and uh, uh, not sure if uh, the people will be comfortable. So of course the videos can all be on. There is no problem, absolutely. It's just that uh, the spotlight option can be used at this regard so that um, it is safe for everyone. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Hakadama Hiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guroho Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rakunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kancha Nagaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vancha Kalpata Rubhyas Chakrapa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namunamaha Namam Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschati Deshatarani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So we will have discussion for some time and then we'll open the floor for questions and answers at the end Today is the disappearance day of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. As we all may have seen in our Iskon temples on the altar, 
we have uh, Srila Prabhupada's picture and then Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and then Srila Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj, then his Guru Dev Thakur Bhakti Vinod Mahashay, and then his Guru Dev Srila Chakanath Das Babaji Maharaj. We all may have seen the Guru Parampara picture. And Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj is oftentimes shown with someone with a bent back uh, because of his old age. You can, you can see in many of the pictures, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj is sitting with a bent back and moving the beads on his Japa Mala. So that Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he disappeared from this world today. He lived a very, very long life, <laughs> manifested his pastimes for about 145 years, um, appeared close to um, 1750, and then lived another 150 years after that. So that's uh, quite a long manifestation of one's presence in this world. Why do we aspiring Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis want to celebrate the departure of a great soul. Isn't it a matter of great mourning and great sadness? Shouldn't we celebrate the appearance of Vaishnavas and not celebrate the disappearance because it's painful? Well, the understanding is the appearance of a Vaishnava is definitely very great because he's appearing in this world from Krishna's abode only for our benefit. But the point is, when great Vaishnavas appear as children, not many can appreciate their glory. The appearance day of Vaishnavas are very glorious because they are coming in this world from the abode of Krishna for our benefit. But how many of us can recognize a great soul just at birth? But on the disappearance anniversary, there is a lot of separation felt from the great Vaishnava in appreciation of what they have lived and how great they have been. So oftentimes we see that on the day of their disappearance, there is more appreciation than on the day of the appearance. Because when a baby is born, we don't realize he's going to be a great soul. But when a great Vaishnava departs, we are uh, in so much separation from the fact and appreciation about the significance and importance of their bhajan and their seva and their mood uh, while being in that body. Another understanding is, for a Vaishnava, appearance and disappearance doesn't matter. They are coming into this world for the service of Krishna. And they are leaving this world and going to that world again for the service of Krishna. So for the day, on the day of their appearance, we celebrate because they have come for us. And on the day of disappearance, we celebrate because they have happily gone back to Krishna from where they came. So their meeting with Radha and Krishna and eternal service in the spiritual world is a matter of great celebration for the Vaishnava community. Also, a Vaishnav doesn't invoke a, a mode of separation in the disciple and the followers through his presence as much as he invokes by his disappearance. You see, the nature of a conditioned soul like me is that when great Vaishnavas are around, um, we don't realize their importance. But only when they depart from this world, we feel so much separation. Oh, ha, Vaishnav Thakur. Oh, Vaishnav Thakur. That separation is felt to the extent one performs seva to a Vaishnav while the Vaishnav is manifest in this world. To that extent, we will feel separation. This is a very, very important point. When the spiritual master leaves his, uh, his, his plane of pastimes and goes back to the spiritual realm, most of the disciples cry. But only those who have served Sri Guru with lot of determination and lot of mamata, lot of uh, possessiveness, while the spiritual master has been on the planet, they will feel the pangs of separation the most. You see, in this world also we see, uh, when the man dies, his wife cries the most. Other friends and colleagues later. But someone who's very deeply attached emotionally and has rendered lot of service is the one who feels maximum separation. So when Guru, Sadhu, great Vaishnavas are on the planet and we serve them 100%, to that extent, the extent we have served them while they're present, to that extent, we will feel separation when they leave. They leave back to the spiritual realm. So the point is pure Vaishnavas, they give uh, instructions while they are on the planet. 
And those who are sincere, if they follow, they will feel the pangs of separation from Krishna. But then those who don't follow, um, they are having some sentimental feeling towards Guru, but not more than that. But even in their life, when Sri Guru leaves, oh, they feel some separation. So the mood of separation is invoked in the heart of the followers by the disappearance of great souls. Therefore, that is also very auspicious because we are not able to feel separation from any spiritual personality, either from Krishna or Gurudev or senior Vaishnavas. So senior Vaishnavas, they feel, oh, if that mood of separation will come in his heart by me departing, let me depart. So they do good to others, even through their disappearance, to invoke and infuse the mood of some viraha, some separation through their tirobha, through their disappearance. So in this way, when Vaishnavas appear in this world and when they depart from this world, it is a matter of great celebration because they have given us so much. They have done so much bhajan. They have purified Mother Earth by their presence. You see, when uh, King Bhagiratha, he was trying to get Mother Ganga into this world. Therefore, Ganga Devi is also called Bhagirati Ganga, right? So when King Bhagiratha was trying to get Ganga Devi in this world, Ganga Devi said, well, I am ready to come to this world, but I have two problems. Problem number one, if I flow into Mother Earth, the force of my travel is such that it will topple Mother Earth out of the orbit. So you need to arrange for a person who's so strong, who can hold my flow when I touch Mother Earth. Bhagi King Bhagiratha said, yes, Lord Shiva will hold you in his jata. The jata of Lord Shiva is so powerful that the flow of Ganga Devi in the soul can be held and Mother Earth will not be toppled off the orbit by their flow. She said, wonderful. The second thing is, she said, I am coming in this world to purify everyone. So people will come and bathe in my waters and they will deposit their sins in me and they will become pure. But what about my sins? Where will I go to purify myself? So King Bhagiratha said, don't worry. Pure Vaishnavas will come in this world and they will place their lotus feet into your waters. So you will purify the world, but pure Vaishnavas will purify you. Don't worry. So Ganga Devi felt very happy and she came in this world. So the point is, pure sadhus, pure Vaishnavas, great souls, Uttam Bhagavats, those who are Premi Bhaktas, Rasik Vaishnavas of Krishna, they are so great and advanced that they are more purifying than even Ganga Devi, that they can even purify Ganga. Hmm? Uh, my Guru Maharaj would say something very interesting. He would say that, how is it that uh, sadhu, pure Vaishnavas, pure associates of the Lord, are more purifying and more advanced than Ganga Devi? How is it possible? Then he would smile and he would say that uh, Ganga Devi is washing the feet of the Lord and leaving out. But pure Vaishnavas are coming towards the lotus feet. <laughs> so who is better? Someone who leaves the lotus feet of the Lord <laughs> or someone who comes towards the lotus feet of the Lord? So you would say that Ganga Devi is washing the feet of the Lord and leaving outward. But pure Vaishnavas are coming inward, coming towards the lotus feet. So therefore their position is even higher than Ganga Devi. So in this way, when pure Vaishnavas come in this world, everybody is benefited. The devotees are benefited. The rivers are benefited just by their Urja Shakti. Sometimes people ask this question. Oh, what are these devotees doing? They are simply sitting and chanting Hare Krishna. Who is getting benefited by all this? Hmm? Do some work. What is going to happen by your talking and your singing? Well, the, the, the answer to that is when one person sitting in one corner of the world uh, can uh, influence the whole world with the coronavirus. One person in some part of the world did something wrong because of which that virus spread to the whole world. So he can sit in one room and cause the virus to spread to the whole world. So why can't one Prabhupada sitting at Radha Damodar influence the whole world and chanting Hare Krishna? <laughs> if the coronavirus can spread, why not the Karuna virus? Why not the virus of mercy? So if one Nastik, one uh, non-believer he can do some nonsense and eat some bat meat and cause coronavirus to spread to the whole world. So why not a person who's sitting and chanting Hare Krishna? Why can't he spread uh, this mercy all over? 
one acharya has written bhava ku bhava anaka alasahu nama japata mangala dishi dasahu that if someone is sitting and chanting the holy name of krishna then 10 directions get purified by those vibrations <laughs> so there are so many people in this world who are contaminating the environment but a pure vaishnava walks in this world only to chant and purify everything so he benefits um, the the believers the non believers he benefits the rivers and not just that he benefits even mother earth narottam das thakur says thakur vaishnava pada avanira sampada shuno bhai hoy kamana he says thakur vaishnava pada avanira sampada that the lotus feet of a pure vaishnava is the ornament on the head of mother earth avani means mother earth and sampada means treasure so the true treasure of mother earth is the lotus footprint of pure vaishnavas because on one side the weight of mother earth is increasing because of all the nonsensical um, activities that are going on meat is being cooked every single minute in this world crores and crores of animals are being killed and and roasted alive so many uh, women and so many children and so many senior citizens are attacked and abused for uh, materialistic selfish agendas so much money is being lost in gambling so much drugs and and alcohol and and cigarette consumption is going on in this world and people are spitting venom they are spitting intoxication they are spitting pollution they are dumping things into mother earth so and more and more over and about that adharma is spreading and people are speaking falsity false words manipulating destroying others lives so much is going on so mother earth on one side is feeling the bhar the weight of these selfish personalities and on the other hand mother earth is holding the treasure of the lotus feet of great souls like shila jagannath das baba ji maharaj who walk on the surface of mother earth only to benefit mankind they don't want to take anything from anyone but they come to give <laughs> one time when shila prabhupada was asked by a reporter in uk that you seem to be like an indian sadhu what are you doing in in uk in the united kingdom what are you doing in london shila prabhupada said actually the british stole away everything from india they stole everything every single thing they stole away but they forgot to steal one thing bhagavad gita i have come to give that so that you can steal us completely <laughs> steal the right thing prabhupada said i have not come here to take i have come here to give so pure vaishnavas when they walk on this earth their purity is the sampada the avanira sampada it is the treasure for mother earth thakura vaishnava pada charan the lotus feet of great souls is the treasure mother earth that is the mastake abharan that is the ornament of the head for us so when pure vaishnavas are appearing and disappearing it is a matter of great uh, importance for us to observe festivals on those days if we see on the vaishnav calendar when we see appearance day and disappearance day we should feel very happy those are the days we should hear and read and discuss and sing the glories of those vaishnavas because those vaishnavas are coming in this world to give us what we have today if we are chanting hari krishna maha mantra today it is because shila jagannath das baba ji maharaj was one of those limbs in the unbroken chain coming from shri chaitanya mahaprabhu who accepted the hari krishna maha mantra chanted the hari krishna maha mantra perfected the hari krishna maha mantra and passed it on to the next generation so what we have today we must be very grateful to every a piece every limb every power packed sun like effulgent acharya who is coming in our sampradaya not just our sampradaya every sampradaya madhvacharya's appearance is our sampradaya but shri pad ramanujacharya's appearance is also important we should any vaishnav who is appearing and disappearing great vaishnav pure vaishnav bhagavat prapt vaishnav instead of celebrating our birthday what are we doing why have we come in this world <laughs> did we come to reduce the burden of mother earth or increase the burden of mother earth 
then what is the point of cutting the cake? What is the point of celebrating happy birthday? What is happy about it? But when pure Vaishnavas come, they appear in this world so that we stop appearing again and again and again. This is a very important point. And Acharya takes birth in this world so that we stop taking birth from one life to another. So that we get liberated back to back home, back to Godhead, back to Radha Sham Sundar in one lifetime. This is why great Acharyas come. So therefore, it is a matter of great importance to remember Acharyas, to glorify them, to read about them. So whenever we see on the Vaishnav calendar, disappearance of certain Acharya, appearance of certain Acharya, we should make it a point that we hear about them, we read about them, and share about them. And this is a point from the Shastra that how much benefit is gotten by remembering Krishna. Million times more benefit is got by remembering pure Vaishnavas, the true representatives. Because by remembering Krishna, consciousness gets purified, no doubt. But by remembering great Acharyas, Krishna is supremely pleased. When we glorify Krishna, Krishna may or may not hear. But when we glorify the pure representatives of Krishna, the pure Vaishnavas of Krishna, then even Krishna is listening with full ears, full attention. And he's very pleased when we glorify those who have done bhajan in this world. And then his heart melts and what comes out is kripa or blessings. So the best way to get Krishna's mercy is to serve pure Vaishnavas. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is absolutely no other way. Our sadhana, our chanting, our reading will not impress Krishna as fast as serving and glorifying pure Vaishnavas. If, if let's say we have a chance to chant 64 rounds on one side and on the other side we have chance to render personal service to senior Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. Then little rounds reduced, that is also fine. But we should be very enthusiastic to serve. Because by their blessings, we will make more advancement than even by chanting one, two, or three lakh even. So this is very, very important. Vaishnava Charitra, Sada Pavitra. The Charitra of Vaishnavas is always pure and always purifying. So therefore, this must be our breath. Uh, not a day should pass on the Vaishnava calendar when it is appearance, disappearance, and we don't pray to them. In fact, remembering pure Vaishnavas is our duty every day. Therefore, Acharyas are called Pratah Smaraniya. They are called Pratah Smaraniya. Pratah means Brahma Muhurta. And Smaraniya means worth remembering. So in Brahma Muhurta, who is worth remembering? Only Krishna. Only Bhagavan. But even if you forget Krishna at that point, no problem. Pure Vaishnavas must be remembered. So therefore, they are called Pratah Smaraniya. That someone who is so advanced that even the remembrance of Krishna can be kept on side. And they must be remembered and prayed to. Granthera Aramba Kari Mangala Charan. Guru Vaishnava Bhagavan Tinera Smaran. Tinera Smarana Hoi Bigna Vinashan. Anaya Se Hoi Nija Banchita Puran. In Chaitanya Charitamrit, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that we must make a very uh, firm effort to remember pure Vaishnavas. By remembering them, all the obstacles on the path of bhakti will be removed. We don't have to worry. Lust, anger, greed, pride will all be taken away just by remembering the life and the teachings of pure Vaishnavas. And our tongue should be constantly engaged in speaking about them and glorifying about them. And if that is the case, then we, have, we will have no taste and no time to sing the paradosha kirtan, the kirtan of the faults of others. The nature of the tongue is to vibrate. So if we don't vibrate the tongue in the right direction, glorifying pure Vaishnavas, then it will vibrate in the wrong direction by criticizing others around. And nobody gains anything by it. Nobody gains anything. So therefore, uh, by remembering them, we tap into their mercy and blessings. But especially, so every day we must do it, but especially on their appearance and disappearance day, when we remember them, read about them, hear about them, pray to them, then their heart melts more. That, oh, I departed from this world to serve Radha and Krishna, and he's feeling some separation from me. Oh, Krishna, give him some credit. So then Krishna's heart also melts that we are remembering someone who is remembering Krishna. Krishna explains in the Adi Puran to Arjuna that those who say that they are my devotees, they are actually not my devotees. But those who say they are the devotees of my devotees, 
they are actually my devotees because they're able to appreciate devotion in the lives of others. And Mad Bhakta Puja Bhyadika, in the 11th canto, Krishna tells Uddhava that more than worshipping me, the worship of pure Vaishnavas is what pleases me. Because what is Krishna doing? He is also busy serving pure Vaishnavas. Saratya parashata sevana sakya dautya virasa nanu gamanas tavana pranaman snigdeshu pandushu jagat pranatim cha vishnu bhaktim kuru tinrupatish charana aravinde. Canto 1, chapter 16, text 16, Bhagavata. That Yudhishthir Maharaj is so dear to Krishna that Krishna was humbly serving him. When Yudhishthir Maharaj performed the Rajasuya Yajna, Krishna was walking around picking up all the leaf plates. <laughs> Jagat Pranatim Cha Vishnu. He who is worshipped by millions of Lakshmis as the, the Lord of the universe, he is busy removing the banana leaf plates and putting it into the trash can for all the visitors in the Rajasuya Yajna of Yudhishthir Maharaj. This is how much Krishna loves his devotees. When Sudama Vipra came to Dwarka, it was interesting. That Krishna sat on the floor and he removed all the thorns from the sole of Sudama's feet and started offering arati and fed with his own hands and made him sit with his own on his own asana and ordered Rukmini Devi to fan. Kuchailam Malinam Kshamam Dvija Dhamani Santatam Devi Parya Charat Sakshat Chamara Vyajane Navai. Rukmini was doing chamar for Sudama. This is how eager Krishna is in serving his devotees. And then not to forget Partha Sarati. He who is uh, the Lord of the universe. He who himself has a chariot driver called Daruka. That Krishna becomes the chariot driver for Arjuna. And how expertly Krishna would uh, drive the chariot and make the horse gallop on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. When Karna took on his arrow to destroy Arjuna. In the, in the Mahabharata it has been described. Karna strung his arrow sharp on his bow and invoked with so many mantras. There was a Nagapash mantra um, involved. And he aimed exactly on the throat of Arjun so that the arrow goes through and the head of Arjuna comes out. And Arjuna had not seen this. So when Karna strung the, bow, uh, the arrow to the string and then shot the arrow, Krishna realized, oh, oh my devotee is in danger. He kicked the chariot so hard that all the horses sat down and the chariot went down underground so much so that that arrow which was supposed to go through the throat, it just flicked the crown of Arjun. And that in itself, when the, the Navaratna money filled with uh, different diamonds, that crown fell to the ground. Arjuna felt this was a great disgrace. He said, what is this? My crown fell down. Krishna said, Ari Baba, your head would have got chopped up. <laughs> now only the crown has gone. And that too, Arjuna was looking so beautiful without his crown. So, so charismatic. So the point is, Krishna is constantly thinking of protecting his devotees, constantly thinking of serving his devotees. When Uttara came running to Krishna, Pahi, Pahi, Mahayogin, Deva, Deva, Jagatpate, Nanyam, Tvat, Abhayam, Pashye, Yatra, Mrityu, Parasparam. When Ashwatthama had aimed the Brahmastra, the womb of Uttara, scorching heat to kill Parikshit, who was in the womb, Ashwatthama had thought, I hate the Pandavas to such an extent that I want to destroy their present and their future. And Parikshit is their future. And at that time, Uttara was helpless because her child was being attacked and she didn't have a husband. She had lost her husband recently, Uttara. So then whom will she go to? She could have gone to the Pandavas. She could have asked Arjuna or Bhima to help. But then she ran to Jagatpate, Krishna. So therefore, um, it is described that even when Uttara needed help, it was Krishna who helped. So Krishna is always eager to serve his devotees. Whether it is Ramayana, whether it is Mahabharat, whether it is any uh, pastime of Krishna. Um, thank you. Any pastime of Krishna or the Supreme Lord. We can see the Lord is very, very eager to serve and hear from his pure Vaishnavas. So therefore, on this day, with this introduction, this is very important because it brings in the other buddhi. Otherwise, we will just hear the pastimes and we will need a story time. Uh, but we have to hear with the thing that this, oh, may I get inspired. We have to pray to our Gurudev. We have to pray to Krishna and Mahaprabhu that uh, please 
may these conceptions, these thoughts, these these teachings, these pastimes of Jagannath Das, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, may it purify my consciousness. May it may, may it inspire me to walk on the path of bhakti, very um, with lot of determination. So that was the introduction. So now we will start our discussion that, uh, about uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj comes in our uh, Gaudiya line through um, through the disciplic succession in a, in a very wonderful way. Um, Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushan was the direct disciple of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And he had a disciple by the name Uddhav Das Babaji Maharaj, who had another disciple, who had a disciple also of the same name, Uddhav Das Babaji Maharaj, who had a disciple by the name Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj. And Srila Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj's disciple was Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So that is the connection. We know Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Baladev Vidya Bhushan are in our line. So then their disciple, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur's disciple, Baladev Vidya Bhushan's disciple, Uddhav Das Babaji Maharaj's disciple, another Uddhav Das Babaji Maharaj's disciple, Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj's disciple, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, and then Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Gaur Das Babaji, Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. This is the, the line in our Gaudiya Parampara. So, uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj took shelter of Srila Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj. And Srila Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj was a very great soul. Very, very, very great soul. I will very quickly in a couple of minutes explain uh, his life. Srila Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj, uh, he was born in a very high class Brahminical family. And right from childhood, he had a great sense of detachment in this world. Now, this is the Gurudev of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. We have not come to Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj's introduction. So, uh, in his childhood, he developed great sense of detachment and virakti. He would have great absorption in serving the deities and hearing Harikatha and doing Kirtan and chanting the holy name. And he would have great distaste in other things. So, his parents saw that he is developing great sense of virakti and vairagya in this world. So what did the parents do? They said, oh, this is not good. We should uh, keep him a uh, little materially engaged. So they thought of getting him married. And when they decided to get him married, Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj as a child, because during those days, there used to be a custom of uh, child marriage. You're talking about 200, 300 years ago. So, um, as a child, he ran away from home. He told his mother that, please don't entangle me. Uh, you can uh, think of getting somebody else married, but I don't want to get married. Uh, I want Krishna. So he ran all the way from Bengal as a child, he and he came to Brindavan. So you can imagine how much determination he may have had as a child. We talk about Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj. But Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj was another example of greatness and great sense of devotion and detachment right in childhood. So he reached Vrindavan and he doesn't know anyone or anything there. He just knows that if I want Radha and Krishna, we have to go to their home. That is Vrindavan. So he came to Vrindavan. And after coming to Vrindavan, he sat on the banks of Yamuna, Yamuna Devi. And he just was drinking water from Yamuna and calling out, Hey Yamuna Maharani, Hey Brinda Devi, Hey Radha Rani, Hey Krishna, please give me some Guru. Without Guru, nobody gets Krishna. So I need Guru Dev. So when he bathed in the Yamuna, Yamuna Devi whispered in his ear that tomorrow morning, when you wake up um, at Brahma Muhurta, you will see a very effulgent personality who will walk to you. He will come to you. He is your Guru Dev. Please listen mantra from him. So then the little Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj, he felt uh, very inspired. So next morning, as he woke up, he saw a very effulgent personality walk to him and said, Krishna has sent me to you to give you mantra. <laughs> because you're very sincere, Krishna has sent me to you. So you hear the mantra. So he chanted uh, the, the mantra in his ear. And then he just left, never to be seen again. 
So the boy started crying. He said, I got the mantra, but I don't know any paddhati. I don't know the pranali. I don't know the, the etiquette of do's and don'ts. How to practice bhakti. I, I just have the mantra, but I don't know anything else. So what to do? He just started crying to Radha and Krishna. Please help me. You gave me guru, but I also need siksha. I need a path of instruction. This is what you cultivate. This is what you think. This is how you act. This is the time you wake up. There's many rounds you should chant, etc. This vidhi is very needed. We all should have a superior who marks us on, on, on the chart. How we are making advancement. What are the things we are doing? Uh, what are the wrong things which are taking us away from bhakti? What are the right things that we should be doing which we are not doing? And things like that. Check and balance must be seen by Guru Tattva or superiors. So then he went to Siddha Krishna Das Babaji of Govardhan. So we must know at that time, there were three Siddha Babas in Vrindavan, very famous. Three Babas. So there was a Krishna Das Babaji, Siddha Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj in Vrindavan. There was a Siddha Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj at Govardhan. And there was a Siddha Jai Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj at Kamvan in Vrindavan, Kamyavan. So there were three Siddha Babas. Krishnadas Babaji in Vrindavan, Krishnadas Babaji in Govardhan and Jai Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj at Kambu. So this boy who had heard the mantra but didn't know what to do, he first went to Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj of Vrindavan first. And he said, I need help. He said, what help? He said, I have this mantra, which means I have guru, but I don't have any siksha. Can you help me? He said, oh, it is not my adhikar. How can I help? I myself need help. <laughs> in great Vaishnavas in their humility. They, not just saying through words. They really mean it. So the Siddha Krishna Das Babaji of Vrindavan was saying that I am not qualified. How can I instruct you? You have received mantra from a very great soul and you're young. And at this age, you have so much nishtha to live in Braj and perform. You're superior to me. I, at your age, didn't have so much. <laughs> so he said, I cannot give you. You should go to Siddha Krishna Das Babaji of Govardhan. He will help you. So then this boy is walking all the way to Govardhan from Vrindavan, no transport. So you can imagine how much he's walking to find Radha and Krishna. So then he went to Siddha Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj of Govardhan and said, oh, this is my life. This is my story. I ran away from home. I got the mantra. Then I went to Siddha Krishna Das Babaji of Vrindavan. He sent me to you. And uh, Siddha Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj of Govardhan is the one who wrote Dina Krishna Dase Kohe Ei Jena Mora Hoi Shri Radha Govinda Premisada Jena Bhasi. Siddha Krishna Das Babaji of Gaudiya, Gaudiya Vaishnava. So, um, so he said, oh, I am utterly unqualified. If Siddha Krishna Das Babaji of Vrindavan is not able to, why? I have no bhajan. I have no sadachar. I am adharmi. <laughs> what can I give you? He said, the only help person who can help is Jai Krishna Das, Siddha Jai Krishna Das Babaji of Kamyaman. So you walk to him. So this boy walked all the way to Kamyaman. And Jai Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj there said, Oh, Siddha Krishnadas Babaji of Vrindavan and Siddha Krishnadas Babaji of Govardhan, they are not able to help. What can I do? I am utterly unqualified. I am very fallen. I am contaminated. I am polluted. I have no good qualities. Uh, what can I give you? He said, My only advice would be go to Radha Kund and pray to Radharani. May Radharani help you. <laughs> So, so this little boy now from Kamya, when he walked all the way to Radhakund, and it's not, uh, it's not uh, near. There's a lot of walking, <laughs> a lot of walking at his age. So you can imagine how much determination he may have had to find Radharani and Sri Krishna. He really wanted to see them. He really wanted to serve them. He didn't want anything else in this world. So now he walked to Radhakund. <laughs> he stayed on the banks of Radharani, uh, Radhakund. Yeah, who's Radharani herself. Uh, for three days, he was sitting on the banks of Radha Kund, just crying. Hey Radhe, hey Krishna, hey Radhe, hey Krishna, ha Radhe, ha Krishna, ha Radhe, ha Krishna, ha Ladli, ha Shama, ha Kishoriju, ha Shriji, just calling out the names of Radharani. Please help me, please help me. No response. No response. Then he said, I have heard Radharani is very soft-hearted. Why is her heart not melting, looking at the crying of a little child? Nobody is helping me. My parents are trying to entangle me in marriage. I ran and came to Vrindavan. Yamuna Rani gave me Guru, but then Guru left me, gave mantra and left me. I went to this Baba, that Baba, that Baba. Nobody is helping. Then I came to Radharani, who is the Guru of even Krishna. 
whose heart is softer than butter, but her heart is also not melting by my calling. What is the use of my life? Why should I even be alive? Nobody wants to help me. The child started crying. And then he tied a rock around his neck to commit suicide and jumped into Radha Kund to drown to death, saying, I have no shelter. And what happened when he tied the rock and jumped into Radha Kund, mysteriously as he jumped into Radha Kund, he had tied the rock very heavily on the neck so that he drowns in that weight. But mysteriously as he jumped into Radha Kund, that hard knot that he had tied all loosened up and the stone and the, the rope just went floating. And he came up on the surface of the water. And when he came, next to him in that water was a palm leaf. And when he flipped the palm leaf, it had instructions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on that palm leaf. He started, he, uh, he kept that to his chest and started crying, oh, Radharani, you're so kind, you're so merciful. Just for three days, a child is crying, and then immediately you're helping him, giving him the pranali, you're giving him the padati of getting out of this world. And in that, one of the instructions was, go to Surya Kund and take shelter of Uddhav Das Babaji Maharaj. So this Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj, he went to Surya Kund, took shelter of Uddhav Das Babaji Maharaj and lived all his life at Surya Kund, performing Nam Bhajan in seclusion. Very, very great soul. So much so that Vrindavan used to be known for three Siddha Babas of Vrindavan, of Govardhan and Kamvan that I previously mentioned. But today, there are many Siddha Babas in Vrindavan, great souls, but in, in Gaudiya Vaishnava Parampara, in Vrindavan, there are four Siddha Babas. Krishnadas Babaji of Vrindavan, Siddha Krishnadas Babaji of Govardhan, Jai Krishnadas Babaji of Kamvan, and Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji of Surya Kund. That, is, that was the intensity of his bhajan. How much he called out to Krishna at Surya Kund. And he was the guru of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So you can imagine the power potency of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's parampara and his line. So when we remember the disciple, we must also remember the pratap. We must remember the, the influence of his Gurudev. So Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was a very great soul. He lived for 145 years in which about uh, 60 years he lived in Vrindavan. <laughs> and about 60 years he lived in Navadvip. So that is about 120 years. So first he lived in Navadvip and then he lived in Vrindavan. And it was already 120 by then. Then he loudly proclaimed, you don't get anything by living in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is meant for the great souls. I am very fallen. Therefore, for me, the only shelter is Navadvip Dham. <laughs> he came back to Navadvip and he never left. Because his breath was, every year, he would uh, stay six months in Vrindavan and six months in Navadvip. So that's how 60 years I'm saying. It's not that he had Akhandavas. It's not that he had unbroken stay. Every year, six months in Navadvip and six months in Vrindavan. Six months in Navadvip, six months in Vrindavan. But towards the end of his manifest pastimes, he stopped going to Vrindavan. He would just live in Navadvip. He would say, Vrindavan is meant for the very elevated high-class devotees. For me, it is only Gaurdham, Navadvip Dham. And it was Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj who used to say that uh, there are so many kings, but you should worship the king in whose kingdom you live. So which means Ramchandra is also king, Krishna Chandra is also king, Gaurachandra is also king. But in the kingdom called Kali Yuga, the king is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he would say that, uh, just worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You will get everything. This was the, these were the realized words of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And that too, he gave another secret. He said, if you want the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then don't call him as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Call him as Shachi Nandan, as the son of Shachi Mata. He would say, Krishna is merciful. Radharani is more merciful. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is even more merciful. But then his name is more merciful than him. Because now we can access the name, although we can see the form. right? But amidst his name also, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, those names which are related to his devotees, like Vishnu Priya Pranadhana, Nityananda Pranadhana, Gadadhara Madhana, all of these names, Shachi Suta, Shachi Tanaya, 
Shachi Nandana, the son of Shachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. Jaya Jaya Jagannath Shachi Ranandan, Tribhuvane Korijar Charana Bandan, Nila Chale Shanka Chakra, Gada Padma Dhar, Nadia Nagare Danda Kamandalukar, Kehabole Purabe Ravana Bodhila, Golo Kera Vaibhav Lila Prakash Korila, Shri Radha Bhave, Hare Krishna Nama Kore, Gaur Korila Prachar, Shri Radha Bhave, Shri Radha Bhave, um, what is that line? Shri Radha. Radha Bhave Be Gaura Avatar Hare Krishna Nama Gaura Korila Prachar Vasudeva Ghosha Bole Kori Joda Hat Jay Gaur Se Krishna Se Jagannath Jaya Jaya Jagannath Shachiranandha Rivuvane Kori Jar Charanavanda That's the song. So Vasudeva Ghosha is saying there the Jagannath is not Lord Jagannath. That is Jagannath Mishra. So Jai Jai Jagannath Shachira Nandan. All glories, all glories to the son of Shachi Mata and Jagannath Mishra. Sri Radha Bhave Ebe Gaura Avatar. So he is in Radha Bhav, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he's coming to give Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And Jai Gaur Say Krishna Say Jagannath. That Jagannath, that Krishna, is not different from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But his address, first calling for him, Sambodhan, is Shachira Nandan or Jagannath Nandan. The son of Jagannath Mishra and Shachi Mata. So it was Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj who would say, if you do Kirtan saying Jai Shachi Nandana Gaura Hari, Jai Shachi Nandana Gaura Hari, Jai Shachi Nandana Gaura Hari, he said, you will get Mahaprabhu's mercy very quickly. This is the fast way to get him. Also, we should be very grateful to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj because the Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda that we chant before every round in Hare Krishna Mahamantra every day in our life was actually composed by Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. <laughs> the Panchatattva Pranam Mantra was actually composed by him and loudly chanted and proclaimed by him. Babaji Maharaj would say that uh, by chanting Krishna's name, it, you will get perfection after a long time. But by chanting Panchatattva Pranam Mahamantra, you will get perfection quickly. So therefore, in Kirtan also, Srila Prabhupada used to sing, Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Prabhupada used to chant that following the tradition coming from Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. The Panchatattva Pranam by singing their glories. Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, uh, also in his Pranam Mantra, we see Gaur Avir Bhava Bhumistvam Nirdeshta Sajjana Priyaha Vaishnava Sarva Bhauma Shri Jagannatha Yate Namaha. This was uh, this is the Pranam Mantra of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. We should we should try our best to memorize the Pranam Mantra of all of our Acharyas in our line. Prabhupada and Saraswati Thakur and Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Shagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and others also, Rupa Goswami, etc. So the, the meaning is, Gaur Avir Bhava Bhumi, Tom Nirdeshta. Oh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, you are the one who uh, told the whole world what the appearance place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is. This is a very interesting story. During that time, people proclaimed that the appearance place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on the other side of the Ganga, on this side. And um, of course, the actual place was lost with time because of flooding in the area. So there was some confusion, which is the actual birthplace. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashay, he was sitting in his house and from his veranda, he could see as he was chanting divine light coming from the other side of the river. Not from the, the, the place where everyone's visiting, but the opposite side. So he went to that place. He checked Shastric evidence of the exact birthplace of Sri Jaitanya Mahaprabhu. He mapped that with the geographical position. And then when he went there, uh, there were some uh, Muslim uh, merchants. So he asked them, what about this place? They said, oh, this is barren land. 
Nothing happens here. We try to put uh, different seeds. Nothing fructifies. Only tulsi grows here. <laughs> they would say this is not a proper place for fielding, field and farming. No crops, no vegetables, no fruits, nothing grows here. Whatever seed you push, only tulsi comes out. <laughs> so Bhaktivinoda Thakur understood, oh, this is certainly the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he mapped Shastra with geographical understanding and also with uh, Tulsi, the presence of Tulsi. But then he still wanted confirmation, our Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he went and asked Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. He did not tell him anything. He did not say that I want to take you to the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He did not say that. He said, I want to take you to a certain place. Please come. And uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj had a lot of affection for his disciple, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Now, actually, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was not the Diksha disciple of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. He was the, Dix, uh, the Diksha disciple of a personality by the name Bipin Bihari Goswami. But somehow Bipin Bihari Goswami uh, deviated from uh, the teachings of the Parampara. Therefore, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in a book called as um, Bhagavata Arka Marichi Mala, towards the, the, the afternote, the, append, the appendix to the book, uh, he writes there um, some revelation, hmm, how Jiva Goswami appeared to him and gave him personal classes. Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes that Jiva Goswami appeared to me and when I was crying for help and inspiration, Jiva Goswami appeared to me and he spoke different verses of Bhagavatam with commentary. And that's what I have put together as a compendium, compendium, compilation of all the different verses, topic and title wise in this book. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur had this uh, disappointment in his heart that his Diksha Guru had deviated. But nonetheless, he accepted the lotus feet of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj as a Siksha Guru. And ours is a Siksha line. You can see that not all the Acharyas are Diksha connected. Like Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Gaurkishor Das Babaji Maharaj also Siksha line. Because Gaurkishor Das Babaji Maharaj was a disciple of Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj. But uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashay was more advanced. And Bhagavad Das Babaji Maharaj told Gaurkishor Das Babaji, you should take Siksha from Thakur Bhaktivinoda Mahashay. So you go to him. So in this way, Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj and Bhaktivinoda Thakur Siksha relation. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj also Siksha relation. So ours is a Siksha line. The, uh, the powerful Siksha Guru we have in our life is actually our spiritual master. Because he's the one who influences our spiritual life. So then um, uh, it's interesting that Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was so detached in his life. He would do bhajan in an unparalleled way. Can I share with you how his bhajan style was? Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj um, would not eat, would not sleep, and would not drink anything for three days. And he would just chant all day and night, only chanting, only chanting, only chanting, only chanting, only chanting all day, morning, afternoon, evening, night for three days. No sleeping, no eating, no drinking. <laughs> Whenever we think we are very advanced, we can try that. <laughs> And then when we are when we fail, then Trinadapi Sudhi Chena Tarorapi Sahishnana, we will feel very humble. So then his style was then on the fourth day he would break his fast. And then uh, some prasadam that day, and then again another three days. Bhajan. <laughs> this was Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj's style. And he always lived in seclusion without uh, any influence of this material world, did not depend on anyone for anything. He lived a very simple life, very, very simple, absolutely simple and with no bodily conception, absolutely. And when he met Bhaktivinoda Thakur, this, this ecstasy just exploded. Both Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj would sit together and now they increase that three days to 11 days. So for 11 days, they would just chant. <laughs> and after sunset, they may take something, but nothing uh, before sunset. So for 11 days, it was just austere fasting, no sleeping, just sitting and chanting and hearing and doing kirtan. They would speak Harikatha, discuss with each other and do kirtan and chant Japa Bas. Nothing with this world, 11 days. And after that, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would fund a feast 
uh, <laughs> eleven day festival, and then you would have a feast, Bhagavad Prasad, and then distribute. So you can imagine, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has a government service, so much so that the British government, Bhaktivinoda Thakur lived at uh, Godrum Dweep in Navadweep, and his office uh, was at uh, Krishna Nagar. So he was moving from Godrum Dweep to Krishna Nagar, and he was traveling. So the British government, they made special railway line. They made uh, railway tracks for Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So that only he travels in that train. Nobody else. It was a train for Bhaktivinoda Thakur that the British government built. You can imagine how great Bhaktivinoda Thakur was, even as far as material work is concerned. He was a, a super in, superintendent of the Jagannath Temple, Puri. He was also a village magistrate. And uh, for all those who think, uh, you know, Grihastha life is not very conducive and having children is very distracting. You can't have any time for your bhajan or whatever. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had 10 children, by the way. He had 10 kids. He had two jobs. Um, and someone who's been in the outside world for with that much absorption, let's say, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj never thought. Hey, I am doing bhajan at uh, Surya Kund. I am doing bhajan here in Navadweep and other places. And I am associating with someone who's a grihastha with 10 children having two <laughs> jobs outside. No, he saw the essence that Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a very great soul. Very, very great soul. The Saptam Goswami, the seventh Goswami in our life. So they would come together and just explosion. The first time when uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashai had darshan of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. This was in 1880. 1880. He had darshan of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And that was in Vrindavan. Our Bhaktivinoda Thakur had come there for yatra. <laughs> and his yatra became successful, having darshan of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was already about 110 or 115 years old at that time. And he used to be carried in a basket by his uh, uh, follower and disciple and servant by the name Bihari Lal. Bihari Lal used to carry Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj in a, in a basket on the head because Babaji Maharaj had become so weak. But when Bhaktivinoda Thakur saw Babaji Maharaj, Kirtan was going on and Babaji Maharaj jumped from that basket with a straight back. He was very tall and he raised his arms crying, Hey Nitai! And he said, what name you have got in this world? Hey, Nitai, what name you have got in this world? <laughs> and not just that, he was jumping. He was jumping so high that even children could not jump. <laughs> so Bhaktivinoda Thakur Mahashai decided that day that this Babaji Maharaj is a very high class voice of, and I want his association. So why I was mentioning all this is to come to the point that Bhaktivinoda Thakur went to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and said, I want to take you to a certain place. Now, this was for the Gaur Avir Bhava Bhumi Stom Nirdeshta Sajjana Priya pastime. So Bihari Lal took Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj on the, on the basket. And as they were crossing through that area filled with Tulsi, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was like this with a bent back in the basket. But he jumped from the... Bhaktivinoda Thakur did not speak a word. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj jumped from that basket and he started rolling on the ground he said this is our nimai's avir bhav bhumi this is the place where mahaprabhu appeared and he was rolling and not just that he started jumping the same way as bhaktivinoda thakur saw him in 1880 he started jumping in the air and he started running back and forth people were amazed at the age of 120 he has so much energy what is going on how much enthusiasm how much absorption how much attachment to krishna and this went on for quite some time. His hair was standing on end and tears were streaming from his eyes that this is the place where Mahaprabhu appeared for me. <laughs> and that's how Bhaktivinoda Thakur confirmed that this was the place of Mahaprabhu's appearance. Therefore, in Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's uh, Pranam Mantra, Gaura Avir Bhava Bhumi Tom Nirdeshtha Sajjana Priyaha. You're very dear to the Sajjana Vaishnavas. Because Nirdeshta, you were the one who directed the actual appearance place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is why Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave Babaji Maharaj the name Vaishnava Sarva Bhauma. 
Vaishnava Sarvabhoma. Sarvabhoma means king. Best. So best of all Vaishnavas. So Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj was the oldest Vaishnava at that time of his generation. And of all the Vaishnavas in Navadvip and all the Vaishnavas in Vrindavan, he was uh, unanimously glorified as the best Vaishnava who is alive on the planet performing bhajan. Very, very deep, intense bhakti. Also, it has been described very wonderfully that uh, our uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj had a few uh, interesting interactions and pastimes in this world. Pastime number one. <laughs> Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's attachment to chanting was unparalleled. Unparalleled. During summer time, he would uh, make a travel to Rishikesh because during summertime it is very hot and Rishikesh it is comfortable. So he would go to Rishikesh and spend the whole summer there, walking all the way. And what was his program like? He would wake up early in the morning, take his cold water bath in the river, and then he would go and close himself in a room and chant loudly in that room all day and night. And then after sunset, he would come out and have some bananas or some buttermilk or something. And next day, he did the same thing. This was a way, this was a, a purascharan, which means a, a purificatory process. Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj would say, I am very contaminated, therefore I have to purify myself. <laughs> I have to purify myself. And the way I can purify myself is by performing this purascharan brat, where I continuously chant. So he would come out of the room only if he has to attend nature's call. But then otherwise he would be in that room only. Nothing. And most importantly, he would keep maun. He would not talk anything else except for Hare Krishna. So all day, every day, day after day, week after week, month after month, for three months, this was his breath. He would wake up in the morning, take a cold bath in the river, and then go into that room and chant all day without speaking a word to anyone. And after sunset, he would eat something. He did this for three months for purification. And then it is described that uh, one time after performing this for two months, he forgot about that breath for a moment and accidentally spoke to Bihari Lal, the servant. And now he thought, oh, my breath has been broken. He started the three month all over again. <laughs> For me, while speaking only, I'm feeling thirsty. <laughs> this was the level of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's breath. Who can understand? Who can understand how much uh, uh, absorption he had in Nam Bhajan? And during those days, to live in the forest, to live in seclusion uh, was uh, very dangerous, very, very dangerous. Now, of course, we have proper place, proper facility, you have light, you have uh, proper walls. In fact, even when our Mayapur temple was being built, before it was built, it was just a jungle. This is during Prabhupada's time. This was 50 years ago. And devotees at that time have spotted the, the royal Bengal tiger very uh, powerful, very dangerous tiger in the in the land. And of course, later, with, by Mahaprabhu's mercy, when the lion of Mahaprabhu came, the tiger went away. <laughs> so, um, so at that time, you can imagine how much the the acharyas have to struggle. They have to, materially speaking, uh, no arrangement made, absolutely no arrangement, and living in austere conditions. And doing such vrat of uh, doing purascharan and purification. Um, this was Babaji Maharaj. If Babaji Maharaj has to be described in one line, it is constant chanting of the holy name. So many devotees at that time, they also uh, unqualified people. They took on Babaji Vesh and started imitating Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. But soon with time, they would be found either accepting money, uh, doing wrong things, Speaking Harikatha, but charging money for it. This is another um, another trick of Kali that, yes, I will speak Harikatha. I will do Kirtan, but this is my fare. This is my 
cost. It's unfortunate. Um, during that time, many used to say like that, that I will speak Bhagavatam, but you have to pay me so much. And they will not say directly, they will say indirectly. I don't want anything, but he's coming with me, he's coming with me, you know, unka travel, inka khacha, inka khana, aise kar kar ke ek bil banta tha. So this is uh, not going to purify even the self, what to speak of those who are hearing. Sri Padayandra Prabhu used to say that if you're charging money for your kirtan, what are you singing in the mic? You're only sharing your anarthas with everyone. <laughs> you're only spreading anarthas. It is not the pure name. To call out to Krishna, to cry out to Krishna, to speak about Krishna and Radharani, uh, that in itself is the highest fruit. What can, how can you trade that with anything else? Will the mother ever say that, oh, to speak about my child and to remember him, you give me money? <laughs> Why will the mother say that? Because she has affection for her child. She will spontaneously speak about her child and remember her child. She doesn't need any money from anyone for that. So when we have some affection for Radha and Krishna, why will we charge anything from anyone? Of course, if Krishna arranges something and it naturally comes, one will accept that as Krishna's, uh, Krishna's prasad. But one will not say that, uh, oh, if you don't pay me, I will not speak Harikatha to you. I will not sing Kirtan for you. Then what is that? That is Maya Kirtan. That is Maya Katha, according to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. So at that time, many of them used to become uh, imposters. They used to take on Babaji Vesh, like Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And, but with, with no time, and they would just pick up a bead bag and sit in a seclusion. But with no time, they used to be found, in no time, they used to be found intoxicating or found with, uh, you know, prostitutes or found taking money for speaking Bhagavatam. It's all imposter. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj used to be uh, very disturbed by this uh, external show. Very disturbed by external show. Um, one time, one, <laughs> this is another interesting, uh, very interesting pastime. One time, uh, again, in line with what we are speaking. One time, one um, Kathakar, Bhagavad Kathakar came to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and said, Oh, Babaji Maharaj, please give me some instruction. Babaji Maharaj said, first you stop speaking Bhagavatam. You're, you're speaking Bhagavatam to, to fill your belly. You see, there are three kinds of katha. The first kind of katha is what comes from the stomach. They speak. <laughs> so in, in a way that my following increases, my, my, my fans increase, my whatever, XYZ increase, so that I can get the roti kapda makan that I'm looking for. My, my, my chapati problems are solved. So using Bhagavatam to get chapati or to get whatever they want. That is the katha from the stomach. The second kind of katha is that which comes from the head. The person is speaking information without realizing it. <laughs> this is, you know, this is another extreme. But the best is when the katha comes from the heart. Where the person is speaking, he is giving, he is speaking information, but it is something that he has, he or she is going through. They are doing bhajan themselves. They are chanting the holy name. They are experiencing some taste and they are speaking from their heart. And this is what will go to the heart. What comes from the stomach goes into the, it doesn't even go to the ear. It entertains the ear and leaves. What comes from the head goes from one ear and leaves through another ear. But what goes through the heart, it will strike the heart, hit the heart and transform. Not inform, but transform. It will not impress, it will inspire. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, told this Bhagavad Kathakar, that if you want something from me, then you give up speaking Bhagavatam as a profession. Take up something else as profession and speak Bhagavatam selflessly. If you want to. So then he was very surrendered. He immediately gave up speaking Bhagavatam. And he surrendered to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was very, very happy with that kind of uh, interaction. Another pastime is there in the life of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Once a, a wealthy businessman by the name Srinath Roy in Navadvip, he came to Babaji Maharaj. <laughs> Babaji Maharaj uh, was doing bhajan in Navadvip. 
So this Srinath Roy, wealthy businessman, he came and he said, Baba Ji, thoda jadu tona kuch chamatkar. Show, show me some magic, some something. You know, vibhuti nikalna, ye karna, wo karna. Sindur, kum kum. Pata nahi kya kya. Yaha se gold, vaha se ratna, aisa kuch. Yaha ka vaha, vaha se haath ki safai. Show us some magic. Baba Ji Maharaj said, oh, I don't know any magic. I really don't know any magic. I know only to chant the holy name. I don't know anything else. <laughs> that is actually the greatest magic. By chanting the holy name, our life will transform in, in a way that even PC Sharkar cannot transform. Great magicians, they can, uh, they can maybe make Taj Mahal disappear, but they cannot make our Anarthas disappear. That Harinam Prabhu will do. So I know only to chant. I don't know any other magic. So Srinath, Srinath Roy said, uh, Oh, no, Babaji, please, you are being humble, but show us something. You are Siddha Baba. Aapka naam Siddha Baba hai. Everybody knows you. And over 100 years you have been in this body as a saint. So some magic. So at that time, Babaji Maharaj picked up a stick. Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj. And he started banging the floor very heavily. He said, oh, get away from here. Go. Don't be here. He was banging the stick on the floor. So this Srinath Roy thought, I have offended Babaji Maharaj. Therefore, oh, then he, he offered obeisance. He said, okay, okay, Babaji Maharaj, sorry, sorry. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Babaji Maharaj put the stick aside. He said, no, no, I was not telling you. You have not offended. Sit down. You have not offended. So then the Srinath Roy said, then whom are you banging the stick at? This is in Navadvi. So Babaji Maharaj said, oh, actually, okay, I'll tell you. He said, in Lokanath Goswami Samadhi at Radha Kund, there is a Tulsi plant in Brindavan. In Radha Kund, there is Lokanath Goswami Samadhi Mandir. There in the courtyard, there is a Tulsi plant. So one goat was coming at this point and eating the leaves of that Tulsi plant. So I was taking the stick to bang on the floor to shoo the goat away, not you. So Srinath Roy was thinking, what is happening? I don't understand. Babaji Maharaj is sitting in Navadvip. How can he say that a goat is eating tulsi leaves from a tulsi plant in the courtyard of Lokanath Goswami Samadhi in Radhakun? So the Srinath Roy, out of uh, some uh, doubt, he sent a telegram to Radhakun to check if this had actually happened. And he got a telegram back confirming, yes, there was a goat which was creating havoc, eating the the leaves of the Tulsi plant in the courtyard of the Samadhi Mandir of Lokanath Goswami. And suddenly there was a banging of a stick sound and the goat ran away. <laughs> so Srinath Roy, he understood that Babaji Maharaj is so exalted, very exalted. So Bihari, after this businessman left, Bihari Lal asked Babaji Maharaj, why did you show him magic? <laughs> so Babaji Maharaj said, some people have no faith in Mahaprabhu. So I have to use my magic skills to get them to the lotus feet, to impress them to the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. Although I don't like to do this, but he is faithless. So just to attract his attention to the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu, I had to uh, do <laughs> this certain activity. Also, another beautiful um, point has been mentioned as far as... Uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj is concerned. Um, his, um, his attachment to Nam has been glorified supremely. Supreme attachment to Nam and to Mahaprabhu. One time Bhaktivinoda Thakur's um, son, one of his sons, he had a chronic disease. Even doctors from Calcutta came to, to take care of him, but nothing happened. He was um, not improving. His health was not improving. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's son. Chronic illness and doctors are also not able to say anything. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, took him to Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, what happened? He said, well, he's not keeping well. What do I do? Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, oh, no, nothing. Just take uh, Thakurji Tulsi, Tulsi from the Prasad of Thakurji and place on the tongue and tell your son to roll in the dust of Yogpit, the birthplace of Mahaprabhu. He will be fine. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur made his son do that. And by evening, the fever broke. <laughs> this was Babaji Maharaj's uh, innovative style of uh, uh, medical uh, repair of body. 
uh, his material consult, uh, medical consultation would go like this. Also, it was Babaji Maharaj who told Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you build a nice veranda outside your house so that you can directly see the yoke feet. You can see the birthplace of Mahaprabhu from your house. Of course, nowadays it's not seen from the house of Bhaktivinoda Thakur because of uh, so many buildings which have been built and constructed. But you can imagine at that time, uh, it was it was so wonderful. They could just see without any construction problems. Um, this Bihari Lal servant, there's another story. Uh, Srila Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj servant Bihari Lal is described to be someone very strong, stout, you know, physically very well built because he could carry Babaji Maharaj, you know, on, on the basket constantly. So once as he was carrying Babaji Maharaj on the streets of Navadvip, um, one man came and placed one rupee in the basket as donation. He wanted to give donation to Babaji Maharaj. So he kept one rupee. One man gave donation. So Babaji Maharaj, Bihari Lal walked a couple of steps. Babaji Maharaj said, stop. Turn the basket back to the man. So then Bihari Lal walked back and called the man. Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj said, take your one rupee back. So then he took it back. He said, what happened, Babaji Maharaj? Are you upset with me? Babaji Maharaj said, I don't know how much, I don't know how you carry the weight of so many rupees. I find that one rupee to be so heavy in my basket. The point is, the ill effects of accumulating money for someone who wants to do bhajan, hari bhajan, that if someone starts accumulating too much money, one will get distracted. So, Atyahara prayasascha prajalpa niyamagraha janasangascha laulimcha shadbir bhakti vinashyati. Atyahara, ahara doesn't just mean eating through the mouth, it also means over collection. Prabhupada writes that in the Nectar of Instruction. So Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, I don't know how you manage to carry the weight of so many rupees. For me, one rupee is also so heavy in the basket. I don't want Bihari Lal to be inconvenienced by that weight. So you can take your money back. Also, there was another lesson hidden here. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he could look through the person and see his intention. So the intention why the person was giving that one rupee, because he was thinking that uh, there is no need to perform bhakti, just give some dan dakshana to sadhus and continue your material like life. Oh, sukha sampati, ghar ave, kashta mite, tanka, jai jagadisha hari. You know, just, like, just let me be happy. And you just give me blessings that I succeed in business. I succeed. My children are happy. My wife is happy. Everybody is happy. Materially, sab sukh sampati ave. To aapko dakshana dene se, aapko ek rupay dene se, aap ashirvat kare. So this was his mentality. By giving one rupee, Jagannath Das Baba Ji, Siddha Baba will bless. Now I will be materially happy. So if this is your conception, then you take your money back. If you're giving as a donation uh, as, as to a sadhu, then for making spiritual advancement, then no problem. Because many times devotees would come and give and Babaji Maharaj would accept. He would not say no. And he was so pakka. Babaji Maharaj, in fact, because of his old age, he had a bent back and he even lost power in his eyelids to open and close. The, the nerves here had become so weak that his eyelids would be shut. To open, he had to, you know, the disciple Bihari Lal had to open it and then shut. It would shut on its own. Like when Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj had to do puja to his Govardhan Srila, Bihari Lal would do the seva. Disciples would do the seva. And then Bihari Lal would pick the hand of Babaji Maharaj with Tulsi and offer because the hand had become so weak. And then he would pull up the eyelids and then take darshan and then close. So Babaji Maharaj, who couldn't even see, he exactly knew how much money was coming in. Because when Vaishnavas gave, he kept a record in his mind, that they are Hari uh, Parikar. They are the associates of Sri Hari. So they are giving for the seva. So he would give that money to Bihari Lal and say, please go and buy some rasgullas. Babaji Maharaj, rasgullas for you? No. Go and give the rasgullas to the cows of Navadvip. Feed the cows of Navadvip with rasgulla. Then Bihari Lal said, then what about the humans? Babaji Maharaj said, don't give them anything. They are hypocrites. They wear the dress of a Babaji and they perform all bad activities. So don't give them anything. The cow accepts that it is a cow <laughs> and behaves like a cow. So it is more straightforward than these human beings. Feed uh, the cows. Nice rasgulla. 
Also, Babaji Maharaj had so much attachment to everyone in the dham that one time Babaji Maharaj, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was honoring Mahaprasad. And some dogs, some puppy dogs in Navadweep came. They wanted to also take some remnants. <laughs> so Bihari Lal, go, let Babaji Maharaj honor Prasad, don't trouble. He shoot all the puppy dogs and they made the sound and then they ran away from there as Bihari Lal was trying to chase them off with a stick. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj became so offended. He said, I am not going to eat. You are offending the puppy dogs of the dham? They are better than the humans. They are at least living life in the dust of the dham with integrity, without any duplicity. You go bring all those puppy dogs and feed them, only then I will eat. They are the associates of Mahavru. So then Bihari Lal had to go and call each puppy associate back. <laughs> and then he fed. And actually Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was honoring. And from the same plate, he was also feeding uh, the dogs of Navati. So this is how much he had Adar Buddhi for Navadvip and Gauranga Mahaprabhu and the associates of Mahaprabhu, the cows <laughs> and the dogs. In fact, uh, another pastime, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was the one who instructed Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tagur Prabhupada to make the Gaudiya version of calendar that we have. The version of calendar in which we are seeing the disappearance of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was prepared by Saraswati Thakur. How old was Saraswati Thakur when he prepared it? He was 12 years old. <laughs> Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur was Vidwan, Vidwan Shiromani, Vidvatvara. He was the best of all scholars. At the age of 12, astronomy, astrology, mathematics, physics, everything on his fingertips, not fingertips, on his lotus feet, all these sciences surrendered to Saraswati Thakur. And at the age of 12, Saraswati Thakur compiled the Gaudiya Panchika, which, uh, of course, with time, place, and different latitude and longitude, we adjust it and we print calendars. But on the basis of Surya Siddhanta, it was Saraswati Thakur who made for 300 years. And under the guidance of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So Babaji Maharaj told a 12-year-old child to make the <laughs> Vaishnav calendar. <laughs> this is um, the greatness of Babaji Maharaj. Also, Babaji Maharaj's vrat during uh, Chaturmas used to be very, very intense. The four months of Chaturmas. He would chant all day. And in the first month after sunset, he would break with, he would break his vrat with four bananas a day. So, which means out of the four months of Chaturmas, the first month, he would fast all day and just chant, 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 chant. And after sunset, he would have four bananas. That's it. Not five. Four. And then next day again, chant all day and then have four bananas. That was at the end. This was for one month. Uh, second month, he would have four guavas. <laughs> Third month, he would have just buttermilk. That too after sunset. So, all of this the conditions are all of this uh, with uh, fasting all day, with mound, with complete silence, just chanting all day and after sunset eating. So first month, four bananas. Second month, four guavas. Third month, just some buttermilk. And fourth month, just some nuts and some banana flowers. Some fruits. That's all. So in this way, four months of Chaturmasi he would perform so intense to get Radha and Krishna. We should be very happy. Our, our chest should be completely, it should expand in pride that we are in a parampara where our acharyas are so advanced, so great that even talking about remembering their pastimes is giving us some hunger. <laughs> we are such that even while hearing that they didn't eat, we are feeling hungry. At least that is my situation. So Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj performed Chaturmas like this. Another story. One time in Vrindavan, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he received, uh, he uh, as Madhukari, as uh, remnants, he received some rotis from the house of bridge Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj received some rotis. So what did he do? 
those rotis he took he placed on his head and he gave it to the sweeper in brindavan you don't say jhadu you say sohani jhadu kiski lagti hai kachre ki lagti hai sohani kiski lagti hai braj dhuli ki lagti hai so jhadu is used to clean a broomstick is used to clean but in brindavan we don't clean because everything is already clean so if it is so if you find garbage like here or wherever you know outside brindavan wherever the garbage is so that is called cleaning that is you need a broomstick that is called jhadu <laughs> but in brindavan it is called sohani seva which means you are doing that only to be touched by the dust of braj in the body <laughs> so it is not cleaning service it is sohani seva we are doing that seva so that the dust sticks on our body so what people call as bhangi in brindavan is not bhangi uh, he is the devotee of tribhangi <laughs> shri krishna bhagavan ki chai <laughs> so so ba so baba ji maharaj when he got um, some rotis he gave it to the the sohani sevak so all the smartha brahmanas there all the baba ji is there so oh, what is this sarvabhauma vaishnav sarvabhauma is teaching wrong example he is sharing his madukari roti with some street sweeper why would he do that they came and asked him so baba ji maharaj said just like krishna told all the demigods to appear in the yadu vamsha before him during him and after him he said all these sweepers of brindavan they are all demigods they are appearing in the present generation by krishna's words and how do we know this because the dust of brindavan is all purifying this is why people do dandavati parikrama they do giriraj parikrama so that the dust of braj is there on their body and the sohani sevaks as they are doing they are only breathing and leaving the dust of braj who is more pure than that so baba ji maharaj said i gave the roti to him so that he can bless me and i can make advancement so this is how much baba ji maharaj valued the dham how much he valued uh, the dust of braja another sweet past time uh, one time baba ji maharaj was in seclusion chanting the holy name and it was about 3 uh, 4 days had gone without any uh, eating he three four day. generally baba ji maharaj would come out every three days <laughs> from his room and bihari lal would cook but now it was three four five days and he had not come out and then after that when he came out bihari lal said oh baba ji maharaj i feel very guilty i have not cooked for you in three four five days because you are inside only i want to do some seva for you you may be very hungry so baba ji maharaj chastised he said don't be on the bodily concept of life don't be so bodily attached what is this all the time hunger 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 you take these kartals and sit in chant hari krishna <laughs> so bihari lal said okay i'll sit in chant hari krishna that is how baba ji maharaj was he even the thought of eating sleeping and drinking didn't pass in his mind it was only naam bhajan going the name was just reverberating from every pore of his body one time it so happened that uh, another past time it so happened that the floods hit navadweep and outside baba ji maharaj's kutir there was floods all over the place water everywhere so bihari lal felt uh, very sad and concerned that how will i go across this water and get some fruits and vegetables and rice and cook for baba ji maharaj if baba ji maharaj comes out hungry i have to make some arrangement and it's water water everywhere how will i go so he asked baba ji maharaj there is water everywhere i want to get something for you but how will i get baba ji maharaj took pair of kartals he said take these kartals sit and chant don't worry he said your duty is to chant krishna's duty is to arrange why are you thinking of krishna's duty you just do your duty don't worry so bihari lal said okay my gurudev wants me to just sit and chant i will just sit and chant and he just chanted 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 you can't imagine what happened a boat floated across the water with 20 kg of rice in that <laughs> and baba ji maharaj said just see ananyas chintayantoma if you just do bhajan krishna will maintain you don't worry 
absolutely have no concern about yourself. Krishna has more concern about you than you can have for yourself. Don't worry. At another time, when Babaji Maharaj was in another place doing seclusion bhajan, he was traveling with uh, Bihari Lal and they were in another place outside the usual place. And it was in seclusion, not a person to be seen around in the middle of the forest. So Bihari Lal went to Babaji Maharaj and he said, I'm little concerned. It's been five days we are here in seclusion in this village. There is nobody around. I want to cook for you. I want to make some arrangement, but I don't know where it is going to come from. Babaji Maharaj took the karta and gave Bihari Lal. He said, sit and chant. Don't worry. So Bihari Lal took the karta and he started chanting. And we can't imagine what happened. There was a whole line, queue of people waiting. People are bringing fruits and vegetables and some are bringing rice and some are bringing this and some are bringing that. So much so that Bihari Lal had to start giving out because there was excess now. So he started giving out. If anybody wants, please take it. So this was the attachment Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj had as far as uh, maintaining himself is concerned. Like detachment as far as that and attachment to chanting the holy name is concerned. Absolutely, absolutely absorbed in Nam Bhajan. Finally, Bihari Lal also once after serving Babaji Maharaj for such a long time, he also fell ill. He became very sick. And again, doctors from Calcutta came to take care of Bihari Lal. So that service to Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj is not hindered. But they also could not figure out what's wrong in Bihari Lal's body. So when devotees came to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and said, Bihari Lal is struggling. He is on the, he is on the Jeevana Marana Sandhi. He is on the, on the doorstep of life and death. Anything will happen at this point. Anything can happen. He can even die. So Babaji Maharaj, please, do you have any miracle to save Bihari Lal? Babaji Maharaj did the same thing that he did with the son of Bhakti Vinod Chakri. He took Tulsi from <laughs> the Prasadam plate and placed on the tongue of Bihari Lal. And again, by evening, Bihari Lal was fine. This was the power in the bhajan, in the shraddha, in the nam nishtha, in the dham nishtha of uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Babaji Maharaj had the vrat. This is very fascinating. He had a vrat of offering 1,000 obeisances every day to Thakurji. Even at the age of 145, he offered thousand obeisances to Thakurji every single day to Krishna. He had a deity of Giridhari. <laughs> Giridhari. I've also seen one deity of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Uh, Mahaprabhu with six hands. Shat Bhuj Gauranga. Two hands of Ramachandra, two hands of Krishna and two hands of Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu is giving that darshan to Sarvam Homa Bhattacharya. But that was the deity of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. I have had darshan of that deity too. So then he would offer obeisances. And it is described that Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj had the nishtha in his sadhana uh, like Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Their sadhana used to be like lines on a rock. You see, when you pull lines on a rock, it doesn't change. It's always there every single day. But uh, our sadhana is like lines on water. <laughs> there are no lines on water. It's, <laughs> it just flows off. No nishtha, no determination. But Babaji Maharaj, even in that old age, he would offer 1,000 obeisances to Krishna every single day. His sadhana continued even at that age without any interruption. Uh, <laughs> Another quick story. One time one man came to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and said, please tell me about the very um, high class esoteric pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So Babaji Maharaj said, oh, I don't know these details. I know only to chant Hare Krishna. You please go to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He will explain to you. So he sent to his disciple. So this man went to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and said, please tell me some Ashtakalya Leela Smaran. I want to know about the different pastimes, the pastimes, <laughs> the esoteric pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, oh, I don't know these details. I know only to chant the holy name. You please go to 
Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj, his disciple. <laughs> so this man went to Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj and Babaji Maharaj blasted him. <laughs> it was Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj who blasted him. He said, you're an imposter. You're not qualified. You don't even chant Hare Krishna properly. You're associating with the widows. You are taking money for doing Bhagavat. You're this, you're that. And you think you're very qualified. He ripped him open. <laughs> Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj in one glance could see what is the paripakvata. How matured is the consciousness? This is another interaction. Final pastime for today. Um, some devotees came to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj to do Ashtakalya Leela Smaran. They came to Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and said, please give us the details of what Krishna does from 10.48 in the morning to 3.36 in the afternoon, from 3.36 in the afternoon to 6 in the evening, from 6 to 8.24, 8.24 to 10.48 at night. All those eightfold pastimes that take place in the spiritual world, please give us all those details. We want to remember them in chant Hare Krishna. Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, sure. Uh, of course, I, um, um, I don't know much, but whatever I will tell you, uh, but before that, you water the brinjal in the backyard. There are some brinjal plants. You please water them. So for nine months, he made them water the brinjal plants in the backyard. And uh, they all left. They came to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and said, what is this? We lay, left our home. Uh, we want, came to Brindavan and Navadvip only to do Ashtakalya, Leela, Smaran. And uh, we went to Siddha, Vaishnava, Sarvabhama, the best Vaishnava. And he is telling us to water Brinjal. How can we get Krishna by watering Brinjal? <laughs> so Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, watering Brinjal under the guidance of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj is more spiritually elevating than doing Ashtakalya Leela Smaran independently by yourself. He said, when you try to catch Krishna by your, by your own, you will fail. But when Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj wants to give you Krishna, you will get because he has Krishna. And all that you have to do to get Krishna from him is please him. And if he is happy by you taking care of Tulsi and watering Brinjal, just do that. That is Bhakti. Bhakti Vinod Thakur explained, watering Brinjal is not Bhakti. But watering Brinjal under the guidance of a Vaishnav to please him is Bhakti. If the Vaishnav says, Water brinjal, and we are watering the brinjal plant for his santushti, for his santosh, for his happiness. Then that mood, that whatever he tells me to do, that activity may or may not be bhakti. But by doing that, if he's happy in pleasing him, Krishna is happy. This is the mood. So Bhaktivana Thakur said that if you would have stayed there longer without leaving, you would have got your Leela Swaran Padati by now because you would have won the, the heart of Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj. He wanted to just test you. How anukul or how pratikul, favorable or unfavorable your consciousness is. So the mood is not remembering Krishna on our own. The mood is serving a great soul. Uh, whatever the detail may be, typing. Prabhupada told disciples, you type whatever I'm speaking in the dictaphone, you type. So actually, if you see, typing is not bhakti. But typing for the pleasure of Prabhupada, for the propagation of Krishna consciousness is bhakti. You see. So in this way, uh, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj performed very, very beautiful, wonderful, unparalleled pastimes in this world. And as we conclude the discussion today, after a long, long discussion, I didn't realize how long the class went. Uh, we just want to conclude with uh, 10 instructions of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj that he gave in his life. So you can kindly write this down. It is very useful for sadhakas. Uh, 10 teachings of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj that we as sadhakas can imbibe. <clears throat> Point number one, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj said, don't associate with people who are hypocritic. Don't associate with hypocrisy. He would say, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj would say, don't, don't intimately associate with the opposite sex. And don't associate with uh, atheists and don't associate with those who are devotees, but actually hypocrites. Three, three categories. Asat Sangha Tyag Ei Vaishnava Achar. Stri Sangi Ek Asadhu Krishna Abhakta Ar. So for a woman, uh, for a Vaishnavi, 
it is not stri sangha it is purusha sangha it is the opposite so when we say in shastra don't associate with women it is not against women <laughs> it is men for men which means when uh, vaishnavi is reading she says she should say yes associating with another man so that's how we should understand it's not anti women it's anti uh, attachment to the opposite sex whoever that is so the three kinds of uh, wrong association is intimate association with the opposite sex second uh, intimate association with someone who is not favorable for krishna consciousness third intimate association with someone who acts like a devotee but is hypocritic putana and ravana both acted like very favorable persons but they came with very evil intention ravana for kidnapping mother sita came as a sadhu putana for killing krishna came as a mother so hypocrisy is something to be care, taken care of that's point number 1 point number 2 Shila Jagannath Das Baba Ji Maharaj said, don't eat anything from someone who is not uh, ser serious in Krishna consciousness. Vishaira anna khaila malina hai man. Malina mana na hai le Krishna rasmaran. Oh, I will go to Pizza Hut. I will go to McDonald's. I will go here. I will go there. Yes, it is muh mein maza or pet mein saza. This is what they give. There is uh, some taste on the tongue, but spiritual consciousness will be corrupted. Baba Ji Maharaj said, "Don't eat anything from someone who's not serious in the path of bhakti." In fact, he said, "Don't eat even from the hands of your relatives if <laughs> if they are not favorable for Krishna consciousness." But of course, this is not a blanket statement. Those on the call, please act with uh, responsibility and maturity. i should not be getting emails that oh after that class i practiced it and there is uh, some kurukshetra at my home <laughs> don't do that please use these principles wisely according to time place circumstance point number 3 shila jagannath das baba ji maharaj said if you want to get krishna chant a fixed number of rounds every day and don't chant even one round lesser than that sankhya even if it is a matter of life and death situation don't uh, live a day without completing your quota and the quota he gave was 1 lakh <laughs> this was jagannath das baba ji maharaj's quota 1 lakh 64 well i was actually trying to be a little soft baba ji maharaj's quota was 2 lakh <laughs> <laughs> Baba Ji Maharaj said, uh, two lakh Hari Nam every day. But Mahaprabhu very kindly said one lakh. The Prabhupada very kindly said one fourth of one lakh, sixteen. So at least sixteen rounds every day. Let's put it like that. Not a round, not a bead less than that. And Baba Ji Maharaj said the best time to chant is between three a.m. and seven a.m. in the morning, and seven p.m. and eleven p.m. at night. This is uh, this is the two time zones that Baba Ji Maharaj gave, Shri Jagannath Das Baba Ji Maharaj. He said these eight hours in the day, ideally one should chant, or at least during this time one should chant. Well, three to seven in the morning we understand, but seven to eleven at night, how do we understand that? Well, the 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 concept is the understanding is chanting at a time when public activity is not very prominent. so people at that time those times of course no internet no electricity and no tv so people would sleep by 7:38 because sun used to be down and no electricity so you can do much after that so people would sleep by 7 o'clock and wake up by 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock so therefore the point when there is no disturbance that's the time to sit and chant that was baba ji maharaj's intention that was point number 3 point number 4 baba ji maharaj said Uh, to take shelter of navadvip dham if someone takes shelter of navadvip dham and does gaur bhajan then very quickly they will get uh, success they will get mercy of mahaprabhu this is point number point number 3 or 4 i i forgot this is 3 or 4 we finished with 4 okay now point number 5 baba ji maharaj said uh, to keep one's eating very simple and dressing very simple he said if one eats a lot quality slash quantity 
then one's bhajan will be destroyed. Bhala na khai be ar bhala na pori be. Gramya katha na shuni be ar gramya katha na boli be. Braje Radha Krishna Manashi Sheva Kori. These were the instructions Mahaprabhu gave Raghunath Das Goswami. Keep your life very simple, eat simple, dress simple. Uh, don't try to enjoy the senses. This was point number five. Now, point number six from Babaji Maharaj. See material reversals as the supreme grace of God. <laughs> Material reversals, any distress coming in life, we should see that as the mercy of the Lord. Point number seven. Babaji Maharaj said, never beat the drum of self-glories in public. Never beat the drum. That I am so great. I have done so much seva. Nobody like me. He said, don't beat the drum of self-glorification or beat the drum of the faults of others. Swa prashansa paraninda, both no beating because drum has two sides, right? So you can either play our glory or the criticism of others. Our glory. He said, don't do this. This will destroy bhajan. Point number eight. <laughs> Babaji Maharaj said, don't cultivate laziness on the pretext of solitary bhajan on the pretext that oh i will also close my door and i will also chant invariably the fan is on and the lights are off <laughs> and there is deep samadhi nidra samadhi he said don't don't cultivate laziness this was point number eight point number nine babaji maharaj has said it is better to cultivate vegetables in the backyard of a pure vaishnava than to pull lakhs and lakhs of inattentive rounds. Babaji Maharaj said, don't pull the beads like a rope. In inattentive lakhs and lakhs of rounds. Instead of that, he said, it is better to cultivate vegetables in the backyard of a great soul. Which means Vaishnav Seva, Shushrusho Shraddhadhana Seva Sudeva Katharuchi, Syan Mahat Seva Yabi Prapunya Tirthani Shaivana. By serving great Vaishnavas, Nam Rushi will rise. Automatically. Prabhu kahe Vaishnav seva naam sankirtan. Dui karoshi grapabe krishnera charan. That by chanting the holy name and serving Vaishnavas, we will get Krishna. And tenth and the final point that Babaji Maharaj said, don't imitate senior Vaishnavas. Just follow in their footsteps. Don't try to walk like them, talk like them, sing like them, mannerisms like them. Anu karana is not right. Anu sharana is right. Taking their instructions, following their example is more important than imitating their gestures. And I want to conclude by saying, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he lived in Vrindavan, then Navadip, Vrindavan and Navadip, Vrindavan and Navadip. And finally, he concluded that I want to only take shelter of Navadip Dham, Gaur Mandal. Sri Gaur Mandala Bhumi Jeva Jani Chintamani Tar Hoy Braja Bhumi Irbas. Gaura Prema Rasarnave Se Taranga Jeva Dube Se Hoy Radha Madhav Antaranga. Narutam Das Thakur has said, anyone who takes shelter of Navadvip will actually get Radha Krishna. And Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj succeeded. Towards the end of his life, he had Sakshat Darshan of Krishna in Navadvip. Babaji Maharaj felt supreme joy in his life. So even now, you can find uh, at Surya Kund, there is a Bhajan Kutir. Of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Next to Siddha Madhusudan Das Babaji Maharaj. Like guru, like disciple. And even now in Navadip Dham, in Kola Dweep, you may see there is a Samadhi of Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. So Babaji Maharaj lived a very, very glorious life. Very sweet pastimes, very wonderful inspiration. So today we pray to Babaji Maharaj. We should have a picture of Babaji Maharaj and sincerely pray. Oh, Thakur Mahashaya, all these qualities may I have in my life. We should pray in a way as if Babaji Maharaj is sitting in front of us. Just like when you go to take darshan of a great soul. How our eyes get moist and we feel so uh, melted in our heart that how this person is so great. So that's how we should pray. That's how we should remember. Uh, our back is straight. Still, we don't perform even one dandavat. Sometimes it's, you know, like just courtesy. We look at the deities and whatever. Babaji Maharaj constantly offering obeisances. So, 
Shila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj ki jai. Gaudiya Guru Varga ki jai. Patita Pavan Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol Vanchai Kalpatru Bish Chakrupa Sindhu Bihai Vach Patitana Pavan. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, thank you so much uh, for an, uh, for a for an amazing class uh, you not only gave uh, or instructed us uh, on the teachings of uh, jagannath jagannath das babaji maharaj you also uh, mentioned his uh, um, amazing pastimes a lot of lessons to learn for us as practicing devotees and you you culminated with uh, his uh, principal teachings uh, it 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 so appears to me like it is a, a it is like we need to meditate on that, like the 10 offenses that we chant every day in the morning. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Amrinder Prabhuji. Um, so what we'll do is, um, um, for questions, um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please uh, raise your hands. Uh, we can unmute uh, one by one so that we don't clutter everyone. So Prabhuji, do you have some time for questions? Sure, Prabhuji. My, my uh, uh, insignificant opinion here would be, uh, if the questions can be typed in the chat box, okay. and then maybe Vivek Prabhu can just read it out. Okay, because sure. then in that way, the time for everyone is saved. Because when okay, we type, sure. we type it quicker than when we unmute ours. Sure. Yeah. So so, so uh, if people have questions, uh, kindly type it on the chat so that we can uh, request Prabhuji to respond to the questions. Hare Krishna. So are there any questions? Yes, Prabhuji, there are some questions. Um, so the first question is, uh, how Jagannath uh, Das Babaji Maharaj did see Sanyas Ashram being a Babaji? How did he see a Sanyas Ashram? Yeah, I don't quite understand the question. Well, um, there is there are some statements about Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj regarding Sanyas also. He mentions that uh, sannyas is not a change of dress. Sannyas is the change of consciousness where one is fixed in service to Nam. This is what he says. Uh, and also during that time, Babaji Vesh was so prominent because it was our Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur who got in the saffron cloth back. Uh, Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas, but then if you see the six Goswamis are all in white. They were all Babaji's. Even Vishwanath Chakravarti, Baladev Vidya Bhushan, all of them, they were all Babaji's. Sanyas Ashram was not so strongly practiced at that time. Uh, but then when uh, Saraswati Thakur saw that there was deviation going on in the name of uh, white cloth, because Grihastas also wear white cloth, Babaji's also wearing white cloth. So whether please Babaji or Grihastha, you never know. You know. So there's no clear demarcation on what is right, what is wrong, because he's in a white cloth. So it was Saraswati Thakur who got the saffron cloth back and, and, and identified that if someone is in saffron and he's doing something abominable, very quickly he can be spotted. So during Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj's time, uh, sannyas was spoken about, but the saffron cloth was not found so popularly. Uh, so the next question is, okay, uh, quite a lot now. Uh, So if there are many questions, maybe I'll uh, respond to them quickly as, sure, as short sure. as possible. So we can take maximum. Yeah. So the next one is, what is the difference between Babaji initiation and normal initiation as took by Jagannath Das Babaji? So normal initiation is step one. Babaji <laughs> initiation is the last step. Like someone who's entering a school and someone who's exiting the school, both are at the gate. Uh, but there is a lot of difference. One is entering and one is exiting. So in Harinam Diksha and Mantra Diksha, we are initi initiation means we are initiating the process. We are just starting the process. And Babaji Vesh Prabhupada explains this Paramahamsa Stiti. 
where one is completely transcendental to all Varuna and Ashramas. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, the next question is, uh, um, who is uh, Srila Jagannath Baba, uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj in the spiritual world? Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj in the spiritual world is Rasa Manjari. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, the next question is how to control anger or any other emotions. Uh, also, I'm not able please to forgive me. I, I take, Yeah, please forgive me. I take my word back. He's Rasika Manjari, not Rasa Manjari. Rasika Manjari. Okay. Um, the question is how to control anger or any other emotions. I'm not able to concentrate while doing Japa. Please cry. Well, all the negativity will go when the positivity sets in. Darkness will leave when the light is switched on. So by performing more bhakti, when the bhakti devotional creeper grows and the fruit of devotion rises, automatically all the weeds will leave. Automatically the darkness will go away. So one-stop solution for anger, lust, greed, pride, envy, jealousy is to chant the holy name, serve the Vaishnavas, go deeper in the path of bhakti, reading Prabhupada's books and following sadhana. Then to the extent we follow and we get attached to Krishna, to that extent we will get detached from this world and all the anarthas will be taken care of. Um, so there is a question of how um, a student mentioning that uh, started practicing Krishna consciousness, how to balance both spiritual life as well as studies. Study when you have to and chant when you have to. <laughs> is there any scope for a person who is from a meat eating background? Uh, is there any scope that we can also have darshan of Kaur Leela and other great acharyas and how is it manifested? Absolutely. Give up meat right now, once and for all, jump into the process of bhakti and never commit the sin again. Uh, should I chant 64 rounds or 16 plus rounds? Chant 16 rounds steadily. You can maybe chant four extra rounds, 20 rounds, and give another other time for reading Prabhupada's books and serving Vaishnavas. How can we improve our reading of scriptures? By reading. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we simultaneously do Japa while also listening lectures, Bhagavatam classes? Offense to the name and offense to the speaker. Best to hear and hear and absorb and best to chant when we have to. In that way, chanting is getting... So in spiritual life, success is always there by focused activity. So chant when you have to attentively, don't do anything else. Study when you have to, nothing else. Worship the deities, nothing else. And hear Harikatha nicely. Don't multitask. The nature of the material world is multitask. We do everything at all times <laughs> and we don't do anything well. Instead, just sit there and hear attentively every single thing. Absorb, write, take notes, think about it, contemplate, practice it. That will help our chanting. Uh, why doesn't Krishna remove his Maya Shakti at once so that everyone can progress in Bhakti very rapidly? Because we don't want to. We want to enjoy. Many times when we are enjoying this role, we know it's wrong, but we still want to go ahead. Many times. We know to eat this would not be Krishna conscious. Krishna helps us. Says, please don't do it from inside. But we say, wait a minute. Yeah, the philosophy is right, but at this point, let me do it. So Krishna does not want to interfere with our independence. Till the time we want to be in Maya, Krishna will let us be in Maya. When we desire to be free from Maya, he will free us from Maya. What to do when family and near ones are against bhakti? Hmm. Just practice yourself to the best that you can. Um, don't try to make uh, Ravana, Surpanaka, Kumbha, Karnakara and Doshan devotees while living in Lanka. Just be Vibhishan yourself. Uh, who is Prabhupada in the spiritual world? An associate of Radha and Krishna. Also, if you have any link or info regarding Srila Sh Jagannath Ashtakam, written by Raspihari Goswami. Can you please share it? Well, I don't have a link. Uh, 
but I have it uh, on my, I got it from one of my devotee friends. Uh, it's on my notes. Um, so I don't know how to share it, but, uh, but yeah, I do have it. I don't have a link, of course. I don't, okay. I mean, online we can check. I don't know, I haven't checked. Okay. Uh, okay. Nuganam Pravaram Sudantam Shri Gaurachandra Priya Bhaktarajam Shri Radhika Madhava Chittaramam Vande Jagannatha Vibhum Varenyam That's how it goes. Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, um, okay. How do we become eligible to go to Naudri Dvam? Going to Dham is not easy. Why? More than settling uh, at this point, um, one can try to visit regularly. Let's say one is living outside and has a job, family, children, etc. Moving to Navadweep will change everything, which means what are you going to do for work? How are you going to make the money? What kind of schooling would kids have? All those things will be considered. So at least once a year, one should think if one is an in India, once in six months, one should think of going to the, the Dham for a few days, hearing Harikatha, serving the Vaishnavas, seeking the inspiration, coming back to the battlefield of our city life to get inspired. And then pray to Krishna when the time is right, then we can move. What is, okay, uh, Mana, Bhuti, Chitta, Hankara, the four Antakaranas. What is the difference between mana and chitta? Chitta is consciousness, mana is mind. Okay. Hare Krishna, it is said in uh, an act of instruction that we should bathe daily in Sri Radha Kund. However, in classes by senior version, it has been said that we should not even allow our feet to touch this holy body of water. What is the etiquette for an eternal Kanishta? So, Bathing in Radha Kund is given in verse 9, 10, and 11. So we can first follow the first eight verses, then eight, 9, 10, and 11 qualification will come. Um, shouldn't ladies worship Shaligram Sheila? Please suggest the minimal deity worship that ladies can perform. If one is uh, having approval of one's uh, bona fide spiritual master, then there is no problem. And minimum worship, Gandha, Pushpa, Dup, Deep, Naivedya, incense stick, ghee lamps, flowers, tulsi leaves, and bhoga. Thank you, Prabhuji. And final one is, is it possible to repay our acharyas? Never. Never. Not possible. But Prabhupada said, just accept what I'm giving. Practice it nicely and share it with others. That's the best we can do. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, again, Navendra <laughs> Prabhuji, for patiently answering all the questions. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you're, you're extremely busy. And uh, thank you so much for taking your time. We are extremely grateful. Uh, every time you, you, you come to Baltimore personally or via Zoom, uh, you take a lot of time to to instruct us in different ways. And uh, you've been a great inspiration for us personally as well. Thank you so much again, Prabhuji. Hopefully we can meet in person soon. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope all the questions are answered. I tried to keep my answers as short as possible. I have a fault of speaking on and on and on and on and simple things also. I take a long time to explain, but I hope all the devotees, whatever questions you had, I hope all your questions are answered and is everything is taken care uh, thank you vivek prabhu thank you pradyumna prabhu um, i personally also like um, uh, radha madhav in uh, in baltimore very beautiful deities very wonderful temple um, i have had very good uh, experiences and memories of the temple there of the devotees there uh, also one of the places shila guru maharaj used to visit um, so it is a tirtha. <laughs> so please, all of you have some mercy on me. Please pray for me. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Vancha Kalpata Rupyasya, Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha, Patitanam Pavani Bhu, Vaishnavi Bhu Namo Namaha.
थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा हरे बोल थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा